Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, and howdy if you're new. So today, we are finally back with some mods and some of the information that you guys have been requesting for a really long time, especially in the Discord. Just a reminder, our Discord link is in the description, and I give you an inside view of what mods I'm working on. I like to get community feedback and share my ideas, and you share your ideas, and, you know, this is all just a community effort here. We're all just hanging out, having fun, modding our device, and if you can't handle that, you might be in the wrong community, because there's a lot of haters out there, and that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't make as many videos as I used to, but today, we're going to get into the mods, and we're also going to be showing you a really awesome product right here that Yona Master sent over that's going to help us with this right here. So, a lot of you guys have done the SSD upgrade or you've thought about doing it but one of the things that you probably don't want is to lose all your files all your installs for your games settings you probably don't want to lose all that stuff right I didn't either and then you ask yourself well what about the cloud recovery the cloud recovery only gives you a fresh install of how it came with your RG ally so unfortunately your settings your pictures your files all of that stuff is gone there's another option you can do. You can do Macrium, which it's it's okay. You know, it's it's possible to do it, but it's like a trial and it's not very user friendly in my opinion. And it did not work for me very well. So I did this review for Yauta Master and I had done a little short on how to clone it. And now we're gonna show you a completely different way to clone it because they offer a product that's even better than my last method. This is a Yoda Master NVMe cloning device. Boom, look at that. So you put the target drive here and you put the source drive here. You plug it in for power and then you hit start. That right there is one of the coolest things ever. I have one of these for old school hard disk drives and SATA drives, but it's very clunky, it's very big, and it doesn't do NVMe. This is portable, it's all aluminum, you can put thermal pads and keep your drives cool and all that good stuff. Another cool thing about it is it has a progress light. Now, this progress light's pretty freaking sweet because you know exactly what percentage it's at and you don't have to guess just by a blinking light because the problem with other NVMe cloners that I've seen is they only had a progress uh, blinking light, not an actual percentage progress. So you saw that it was making progress, but you just didn't know how much it was doing. You've also got USB-C, so you can plug it up to your computer, copy data over. It's a pretty well-built design. It's a chonker, it's all aluminum, it's metal. It's a good one. I'm gonna show you how it works in a second, but we're gonna dive back into this, and we're gonna show you the mods that I've done as we get into removing the NVMe drive. So I'm running Ghost Factory OS. It's basically a stripped down OS. It's very good, but it comes with a lot of caveats. If you're not very uh, Windows savvy, you're not like an experienced uh, PC builder and you've, you've not reinstalled Windows like 100 billion times, it might not be easy for you. However, it's pretty feature packed. It does have themes. It does have tons of different options on it. You will have to open up the Ghost Toolbox and do a little bit of configuring and add some things back, like the Windows Game Bar and stuff like that. But that's a whole nother video, okay? Whole nother video. We're gonna dive into the mods first, okay? Software will come back. This abomination right here is what we've all been waiting for. This abomination right here is a Noctua 92 millimeter fan with a 3D printed housing little fan guard so you don't stick your sausage fingers in here and chop them off. Although it's not spinning at super high RPM, so it's extremely quiet. That's why I chose this design. You can see I've got my 3D printed back pedals or little buttons back here. You can see I've got my little 3D printed pedals right here. These things are freaking awesome. And this is how I'm powering it. I basically took the fan cable, I shortened it, I took a USB cable, I basically joined it together. It's just a mismatch hodgepodge hybrid of, oh, it's, it's, it's not a good design, but we're working on it, okay? We're cooking here. Be patient. So this is the adapter I have right here, and this only is going to work on battery power. However, if you plan on plugging it in, you can use this adapter right here 
and plug it in right here and then you plug your USB-C in here and this will allow you to have pass through power and it'll power the fan and all that good stuff. I would plug it up but I don't have my little USB-C cable handy so just trust me bro. So now we're going to get into how I attached it and all that good stuff. And if you're wondering what screwdriver this is, a lot of people do ask. This is the Aeromax. I will leave a link in the description below. It has tons of different settings. It's a very good screwdriver. I've been using it for a couple years and it hasn't let me down yet. So before we forget, let's turn off our device. Shut that down. It does have a light. And yes, my memory card reader still works. Everything works. I haven't bricked anything on my device. So now let's open this up. Okay. All right. I told you guys it wasn't pretty, but this is my first version. Um, I had thought about this and tried to figure it out a better way, but this is the best way that I figured out. Now the reason I left this slit here in the middle is basically for core strength because without it, I thought about it and it's just going to be too flimsy. You could do it, you could get away with it, but the problem is going to be when you start putting these screws in like this, you're going to lose a lot of tension here in the middle and it might flex and it might not want to shut right. So what I had to do is take a Dremel tool and a razor blade and all kinds of stuff. It took me a couple of hours to kind of round this out perfectly with the fan and it's not even perfect as you can see. There's still a few spots that I could widen it up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to make much of a difference at that small of a, you know, extra little bit of room. So also I did keep the little mesh right here, which you can remove that on the factory if you want. I've seen some people get a little bit better gains. You can even widen up these holes and stuff like that with a Dremel tool. You basically could widen a lot of this stuff to allow more air to come in. It may or may not help. Now on to what I had to do for clearancing this stuff. I basically uh, had to cut out a few little plastic pieces here, had to trim a little bit here, had to trim this foam here and that foam there in order to put the screws in. And basically I'm using just a 3D printed little fan guard. So you don't put your sausage fingers in there and cut them off. Um, it works okay. A metal one would have been better, but I didn't have a metal one on hand. So keep in mind, if you touch it like that, it does bend inwards and it will touch that fan. So the 3D printed backplate buttons, I'll try to leave a link below um, on where you can uh, purchase or download these and print your own. They were a little tricky. So keep in mind that you'll probably need to reach out to the 3D printing community and ask them for some assistance. So now we're going to talk about the world famous NVMe heatsink. So this is what got me a lot of flack. It even got me banned off of the unofficial RG Ally Discord. Um, yeah, shout out to the turd bucket who didn't listen to the instructions and raised holy hell about it because he thought he could reinvent the wheel. And uh, yeah, that was just dumb. If you're gonna do a mod and you don't follow the instructions, don't blame me for it. In fact, don't blame anyone if you mod your device and you mess it up and you run the risk. You should be smart enough to think about what could happen if you if you do mess up. So here's the mod in its current state. Out of the box, you can fit one of these on here. It's a 25 by 25 by 10. And you can even fit a 20 by 20 by 10 or something like that. You know, the sizes may vary, but this is what happens if you put too thin of a thermal pad on there you'll kind of dent your heat pipe now what some people didn't know is they may not have paid attention when they opened up their device but you can see right here this little indention right here this little indention right here was already there from the factory every one i've seen has this little you know hump right here and they tried to say i've done that no I did this, but let me tell you, this is not a vapor chamber design, so this does not matter. I've tested before, I've tested after, everyone else I know has too, doesn't matter. 
this right here you can see already has dents in it from the factory so dents don't matter in a heat pipe like this in fact i've got several laptops that have way worse dents in them from the factory just the way that they're formed and crushed into place they aren't perfect from the factory so don't get your you know feathers ruffled over that so what you can do to kind of prevent that is you can grind off this little corner right here and you can paint over it like I did right here with a marker to make it look pretty. I basically just took a Dremel tool and I ground it down in the corners. That way, no matter how I put it on, it's not going to hit that right there. If you use too thin of a thermal pad, it will for sure hit because it'll be lower to the drive and closer to the pipe. I used a one millimeter pad. Don't use a 1.5 because it won't close and you'll have a bow on the back plate. Don't use a 0.5 because it's too thin. It doesn't have enough squish. I mean, I've had a million and one questions with people trying to reinvent the wheel and think they know better than me. And I'm just telling you what works. Okay. If you think it works better for you, go try it. But I thought about all the possibilities ahead of time. And I've told people over and over and over what happens if you do this, what happens if you do that, and they still don't listen. And then one person one person messed it up for everyone so when that happened i basically went into a dark cave and i just was like you know what if people are going to be this ungrateful i just don't want to mod anything anymore but i found out that that wasn't true there's tons of people out here in the comments everyone in the discord loves these mods and they've been begging me to bring them back so here i am bringing you the mods back so just uh, bear with me on that little rambling. Thermal paste. I have tried the PTM uh, that you could buy on Amazon. It's very hard to work with, and it's not really any better than, than factory. I believe it's just the same, if not a little worse. I, I just don't know. I, I didn't like working with it, okay? There are some people who simp out for PTM. It's fine. If you like it, it works. I just, it's too rough to work with. I don't like peeling it off. It's just, it's too messy and it's it's too expensive so here is what i found i have used a number of thermal paste like kingpin i've used arctic i've used them all i'm gonna let you in on a little secret what if i told you there was a thermal paste that i bought for a dollar that blew me away this paste right here performs better than any paste i have tried and it's really good it's the xspc k3 thermal compound so this paste is a little bit thicker and it's probably not going to have as much pump out effect as some of the other paste that I've used and it seems to have lasted a lot longer. I use Thermal Grizzly, I use quite a bit of other stuff and after about a week the temperatures kind of fell off so any gains that I had were very short lived. This one actually had more of a substantial gain than anything else. Also remember if you're putting this NVMe heatsink on Watch my prior videos on how I first put it on the back plate and then I closed it when I lay it down like this and then I put the ally on top of that and reference it just right. Uh, I see a lot of people trying to do this and closing their device and that will lead to some issues unless you have cut out the back plate um, and you know exactly what would normally hit that. So even I, with this clearance all out, I have some issues sometimes. So before I start just slamming it down, I'm very careful about it but I digress. This right here is some copper one millimeter slugs. They're like little um, copper shims. These are little copper shim kits that you can buy on Amazon. They're not that expensive. Actually, I think these are like a 1.5 millimeter if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, these might be like a 1.5 millimeter. So yeah, this is basically a little copper slug. Underneath it, I've got some uh, pads called critical pads. They're very expensive. I just, I don't think they're worth it, but if you wanna buy them, try them out. You know, hey, by all means, I had a spare set on hand from back in the um, GPU water block days where I was doing a lot of water blocks on EVGA cards and I had had a few sets that were sent to me and they are amazing. But they're like clay they're very thick and kind of like clumpy and mushy and you can mold it around but they're very sticky and i like that so one of the other things uh, that we've talked about before is the memory card reader now the reason the memory card reader has failed i've had it in a few other videos mosfets the inductors and the vrms all the power delivery system creates heat 
It doesn't matter what your temperature is on your APU. It doesn't matter what power level you're at. It's still going to create heat. That heat has no reporting, no reporting. Any number you see on your ROG ally, especially in Armory Crate, the overlay, you have no idea. A lot of people are like, oh, my, my temperatures, did blah, blah, blah. temperatures doesn't really matter. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why the temperature limit on the reader itself and the chip is about 70 degrees Celsius. The chip itself, I believe is the main one that has that limit. Okay. So we'll just work with this. The chip is on the other side of the board. So there's no cooling. There's no nothing to keep it cool. So every bit of heat that is on this board is going to soak into the other side of it. So the more efficiently you can remove the heat from this board and either cool it or exhaust it or however is going to help you in the long run. And the reason why Asus raised the fan curve over here is because they knew this area was extremely hot and at lower fan RPMs, it was not exhausting the heat out. So the heat was essentially just soaking into the board. And that's a problem because that heat will eventually soak onto the other side where that chip is. Now, in Asus's infinite wisdom, of course, you know, they would never have an oversight, but they did notice that they probably needed thermal pads on the back of the MOSFETs and the inductors. This little metal part right here is actually part of the fan housing. And on the other side of it's the power delivery, but guess what? There's thermal pads under it. We're going to get into this guide in the next video. Okay. So stay tuned for that. But this right here is going to have thermal pads. I've upgraded the thermal pads. I'll share what size and all that good stuff in the next one. Um, I may even insert a clip of it here. I think I've done before, but I'm going to show you that. I'm also going to show you the repaste and all that good stuff. But today we're going to kind of get back on track and we're going to go for the NVMe right here and we're going to clone it because I am uh, kind of getting sidetracked. Also, I've done the spring mod for my joysticks and it tensions them up a little bit more so it feels a little bit more tactile, a little bit stiffer. And I like that. From the factory, they're a little too loosey-goosey for me. So now let's, uh, let's dive into the NVMe mod. This video is so long, I'm sorry. Now when you're removing your NVMe, remember if you can slide backwards just a little bit, maybe slide up, it will help it. Don't want to lift it like you would a normal laptop or desktop NVMe because this right here is just very stiff and very flat. So now here is how we're going to clone it. We're going to put our source drive in right here. We're going to close this up. We're going to put that there. Close that here. So that's our source drive. It's our target drive. Make sure we get the right drive in there. Yeah, we do. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is that your target drive is at least as big as your source drive. Even if there's only a few megs on here or gigs or whatever, you need to have a big enough drive to copy the whole thing. It's going to basically image the whole drive. It doesn't matter how big it is. If this is a 512, this needs to be a 512. If this is a one terabyte, this needs to be a one terabyte or two terabyte or so on. It can be bigger, but it just can't be smaller. Now there is a screw that you can put in there, but we don't need it. Well, I don't need it. You might need it. You might be clumsy. So here we go. We're going to plug this in. Going to hit the power button. Lights a little dim and hard to see. Okay. We just lit up. So I guess it's ready to go. It's recognized both drives. Once it's powered on and you've got your status indicator light on both sides, giving you the go ahead, you'll hold the start button down for five seconds. And then you'll see this right here light up and now it's telling you that the process has started. So let's put this down and we'll see how long it takes and we'll be right back. So I wanted to check the temperature of the drives, but since it was cloning, I didn't really have a proper way to check, but I just touched on my fingers and I noticed they're pretty warm. 
So I decided I probably should have done this from the start, which is put thermal pads on it. Do not do this while it's being in use. It's just not a good idea. I even tossed on some extra heat sinks for good measure. I'm not sure if it helped, but hey, anything is better than nothing. And we waited quite a little while. I even had a thermocouple on it to test the temps on the outside of the device, which it's mid 40s, not too bad. I think the drives were probably in the 60s if I had to take a guess, maybe upper 50s. It's not too bad, but I really didn't have a proper way to test the controller or the memory temps, but one would only assume they were pretty warm. Put it all back together and uh, here we go. And just like that, we have a perfectly cloned drive thanks to the Yadamaster NVMe cloner. This is a game changer. That is awesome. So now I have a complete clone of my drive. So I just want to add a little information here. If you're planning to use this to clone something like the ROG Ally drive or a Steam Deck drive or anything on a computer where you're upgrading the drive, what you're going to want to do is expand the partition when it's done because basically what it's doing is cloning exactly the drive to the other drive and it doesn't know how big the drive is it just knows that it has enough room to put the stuff on there in the first place so what you're going to do is click start you're going to look for the disk management then you're going to right click right here on your c drive and you're going to hit extend volume and then basically go through the process and hit next and you'll extend the volume and that will give you the full use of your drive once again. So you have an exact one to one clone of your old drive, but on a much bigger drive. Now on to a bigger drive. I did it on a 256 gigabyte and the one I put in there was a 512 gigabyte, but you can do it with a two terabyte one. It doesn't matter as long as the source drive is smaller than the target drive. So your target drive needs to be your upgrade drive. It needs to be bigger. Wow, that was friggin' awesome. The only downside is it did take a little bit longer than I was expecting. We're gonna try the process later on with some different drives, but for now, I think it's a definite pickup, especially if you're wanting something that's easy and quick and it doesn't take a lot of effort to do it. I think it's very user-friendly being able to just plug them in and press one button. We did add some heat sinks on there because of course I would have to mod it if it is my device. So we are going to do some more mods. We're gonna be doing some more videos. We're gonna be talking about all kinds of cool stuff. So if you liked what you see, I would appreciate it if you would sub, like, comment, all that good stuff. Whatever you wanna do is fine with me, but definitely, definitely hang around for the next one. You will not want to miss it. I assure you, you won't. So with all that, my friends, I hope all y'all have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.